Larry Webb with Weathermatic, and I want to welcome you to the webinar where we are going to talk about the SmartLine controller and how to program the SmartLine controller in both the basic or standalone mode as well as the ET-based or weather uh, mode, um, smart mode. So let's jump right into the controller and talk about uh, specifically how you uh, program each one of these steps. You'll see on the start of your screen or the, uh, the faceplate that you have here that you've got uh, four buttons at the top. Uh, on the top right, you have an up or down button. On the left-hand side, you have three buttons, actually. The program button, that changes your program. And then the next and back button. Now below that, you're going to have uh, two other buttons. Those allow you to change on the left-hand side between the smart mode and the basic mode, and on the right-hand side between uh, whether or not uh, you want to monitor your uh, rain or freeze sensor, if you were to have one on your sensor loop input. Um, again, on the right-hand side, you're going to have all of your basic functionality. The 12 o'clock position of the dial is going to be your run position. And then directly to the right of that is going to be your system off position. Um, and then we're going to move into the current time and day. And this is where you would enter the current time, the current day. Uh, moving to your program start times, then again up to eight start times per program, four programs A, B, C, and D. Uh, this is where you would set up your start time for program A. This would be your first start time. You could add an additional seven start times to this if you wanted to. And then you're going to go through and program each one of your stations according to how you want to either manually run these um, when you do a manual test, or, or manual zone, excuse me. Um, or this is what the default would be if, by chance, uh, you took it out of smart mode. Again, if you are using weather-based uh, control on each one of these zones, then this 25 minutes for zone one, for example, would be overridden by whatever the ET value was for that particular day. Um, it's also good to note that you do need at least one minute of runtime on each one of your zones in the zone runtime feature, even if you are using ET, uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, this allows you to do manual zone irrigation and turn on particular zones. With no time in here, the zones won't run even manually. And in addition to that, uh, this allows you some uh, backup. Uh, functionality in case, for example, you lost your weather station and weren't able to water according to ET. And then moving on, we are, have three options on days to water. We can either water on a conventional weekly calendar, Sunday on, Monday off sort of thing, or we could set up an odd even schedule or even a cyclical schedule. So if you wanted to run uh, program A every 10th day, for example, so you've got three options there. Down below that, then, we're going to add our omit times. Again, the first time is when the restriction starts. So in this case, it would be 10 AM. And then the second time would be when that uh, time closes, when that restriction stops. And that would be at 6 PM. So again, no watering between 10 AM and 6 PM. So as I said, we really have two controllers in one. Uh, standard mode is going to be your, your conventional run times uh, and allow you to uh, essentially run the controller like a conventional uh, non-weather-based irrigation controller. Uh, the auto-adjust mode then is going to override the standard mode, both in the input of the run times, the seasonal adjust, as well as the run soak settings, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Um, it does still use the same watering days, start times, and omit times, days, and dates. So that's, uh, it's important to note that your restrictions will still apply even in the auto adjust mode. And then it automatically adjusts the irrigation based on weather and the plant's needs, as we'll see as we go through this. So again, we have four steps for the smart mode. You'll notice the green box over to the left-hand side of the screen of the display there, the panel. Um, we're going to enter a zip code. This essentially sets up our latitude. Um, this is what tells the controller where we are on the Earth and allows us to specifically dial in the ET according to the plant water requirement uh, of your local geography. 
and the time of year. Um, we're also going to enter the sprinkler type, which essentially tells the controller how much or how fast the sprinkler is going to apply that water. Uh, number three, step three, would be your plant type, which is going to identify what type of plant species it, it is that we're trying to water. And then lastly, you're going to enter your soil type and slope, which allows the controller to automatically adjust those run times and essentially spoon feed the water according to what the soil infiltration rate can take. Um, so having both the soil type and slope are important so that we don't have runoff um, and we, we actually apply the right amount of water that the soil can take. So let's take a look at some of those features. Uh, again, as we're looking at the panel, the latitude uh, feature is going to be the lower left-hand corner of the dial. And we are going to enter the, the zip code, which is going to give us our latitude for the specific location of this controller. We're then going to move on to the sprinkler type. And you've got two ways to enter the sprinkler type here. It's sort of unique to the SmartLine controller. Um, for most people that are programming ET-based controllers, some of them aren't uh, as uh, knowledgeable about precipitation rate or application rates of irrigation systems. So we put in some shortcuts into the controller that allow for you to, to quickly set up the controller without having to dig into specific precipitation rates. So we've got some shortcuts here that someone could use to set up the controller for zone one, for example. Um, they could choose either a spray head, a rotor, a drip system or drip zone, or a bubbler. Or specifically, if they knew what the precipitation rate was for zone one, they could also enter that information. So two ways, either using the shortcut or the actual application rate number in inches per hour can be entered under the sprinkler type. Similar to that, a plant type, which is the next dial position on the controller. This, uh, again, we have some shortcuts here for someone that may not be as uh, educated or experienced with plant species um, so that they can quickly set up the controller in its smart mode. So we have warm season turf, cool season turf, shrubs, annuals, trees, and native. And then, of course, if they wanted to enter the actual plant species landscape coefficient, uh, they could enter it here as a percentage for zone one. So two options there as well. Moving on to our soil type, you've got three choices here. We try to keep this simple and not get too confusing for folks. So you've got three choices of loam, clay, or sand. And then beyond that, you're going to enter your slope uh, degrees. And then this is going to take into account the soil infiltration rate and only water according to what the soil and slope can handle and uh, not uh, uh, trying to eliminate a lot of your runoff that takes place when uh, you don't account for your soil infiltration rate. And then beyond that, our, our last feature in the blue section is what we call our more or less feature. What this allows you to do is really establish your microclimate. So your your exposures, um, your top of the hill, your uh, types of landscape, you can really dial in the ET according to what you need. And it's a real simple formula in the case that you see here. You can increase irrigation uh, on zone one by 10%. What's unique about this, this is not a water budget. What this does is it takes into account all of the ET factors reprograms the runtime based on the local weather for the last uh, 24 hours or beyond if you've had some, some off days, um, and then reprogram that zone one according to what the weather is doing. But it's also going to add 10% to that. So this allows you to fine tune for circumstances that are unique to the site, or in fact, uh, in most circumstances we see for a established landscape to all of a sudden move into a smarter ET weather-based mode, um, oftentimes the plant material is, is so used to being over water for so many years that it really shocks the plant material. So you want to almost wean it off of being over watered. So what this allows you to do is start with a percentage that's a little bit higher of ET and then slowly over time scale this back to wean the landscape material off of being overwatered. So a real quick way to uh, change, uh, increase and decrease your water requirements on your plant material according to your microclimates uh, with just a, a couple of uh, button pushes 
uh, for each zone. Um, you can also reduce the amount of water here as well in percentages. So it gives you a real nice feature set to fine tune your weather-based irrigation system. Uh, again, accounting for all the circumstances that may change over time. Okay, with that, I'm going to just uh, jump into some other screens. You can see on the dial on the upper uh, left-hand side, you have some manual zone and manual test functionality. This is where you would manually turn on irrigation. We'll talk about that in a second. And then at the 6 o'clock position, all the way down at the bottom, you have an advanced menu. And rather than going through it on the controller, um, I thought it would be best to uh, add a description to each one of these so that you specifically could see what each of these functions does. So we'll start with the manual operations. Um, the manual test functionality, um, or I'm sorry, the manual operations uh, manual zone function allows you to simply turn on a single zone for a period of time and go uh, do what you need to do with that zone or syringe that particular zone for a period of time. The manual test function allows you to test all your program zones, and you can uh, do this by setting up a customized uh, uh, time for each one of these. So if you're doing a sprinkler check, for example, um, you can set up uh, the manual test to do a quick walkthrough, and you've got some, some variability in the number of uh, time and the amount of time that you can put on that test. You see there you can do a 10-second test all the way up to a 10-minute test. Um, which gives you time to walk through each zone, and you know specifically if you wanted to quickly walk through your zones, you're not tied to a two-minute default um, or doing a manual test. So you, you've got uh, some water savings features even in the manual test mode. Um, and also, it's important to note that as each one of these manual operations take place, uh, we are performing the diagnostics on all those zones to detect any electrical uh, outages or out of ranges for uh, wire path issues as well. So any time these zones come on, whether in manual or automatic mode, it is performing all these diagnostics. And then you have a simple push button to start the program and let it run, and then uh, a, a simple way to turn it off by just uh, turning the dial to system off. Let's then talk about the advanced features. Uh, again, the advanced features is located at the 6 o'clock position on the dial. There are a number of advanced functions in the controller, and uh, a lot of these, the capabilities and the smart uh, uh, capability of the controller is located in these advanced menus. Um, first of all, you have some ability to see when your uh, calculated run times by zone based on the EP deficits are. You can see what your run soak maximum run time and minimum soak time are. You can make some changes to those if you wanted to. It will show you your, your EP deficits, your temperature data, total run for the entire zone. Uh, and then you can clear any deficits out if you wanted to stop accumulating uh, ET over a period of days and, and start it from fresh. Uh, uh, once again, you can do that. Uh, your default program is going to be available in your advanced menu to allow you to restore your basic program that you programmed into the controller and retrieve it later. And then you've got an about feature that allows you to check the firmware version of the controller itself uh, in case you were interested in upgrading to uh, our SmartLink uh, web-based control as well. Um, as we've sold the SmartLine controller since uh, the early 2000s, um, we've made some changes to the system. Um, and uh, sometimes that firmware allows us to determine whether or not those new features will be available on the controller. And we do have the ability to, to either flash that firmware or change out a panel to make those features available to you if you are interested. This is also where you would change your daylight savings time, uh, set up your grow-in schedule to establish temporary plant material or, or grow-in, um, clear all uh, your schedules and, and everything, all the information out of the controller or just a program. Uh, we do also have a master valve to zone delay. 
So if you want it to pause between when the start, uh, when the zone starts and when the master valve turns on, that allows for a pump to generate pressure. If you've got a small uh, small tank that, that needs to build pressure before you turn the zones on, or if you've got slow closing valves, the zone to zone look, uh, delay feature would allow you to pause between two consecutive zone starts. Um, this is also in the advanced features where you would increase the number of start times. We default at three, and again, we can uh, incorporate a maximum of eight start times per program. So this is where you would change what, the, what you see when you go in to change the uh, start times of the program. There's a sensor default uh, setting. Uh, that is user definable, either normally on or normally off. This is where you would change that in the advanced features. Um, the SLW feature allows you to uh, change the amount of time that the rain delay uh, takes place. And we, we, I didn't mention this in the weather station, but what the weather station will do is after a precipitation, it will shut off uh, at a preset um, amount of precipitation, either an eighth of an inch, a half an inch, a quarter inch, you've got some variability there. Um, in addition to that, we find that some of the rain sensor capabilities, uh, depending on your, your site, if you've got heavy clay soil with a lot of uh, plant material, it tends to dry out more slowly. So what this feature does is allows you to increase the amount of time that the uh, controller stays off after a rain event. So uh, you've got some variability in how you want to uh, uh, change when the controller turns back on after a rain event uh, according to specific site uh, conditions. You can do that here. Um, we can also change the rain and freeze sensing by zone here as well as we mentioned earlier. If you've got zones that you want the, that you want to ignore the rain sensor, you do that here as well. Uh, rain delay feature is also included in the advanced features. This is where you would set up your manual rain delay, and then all of your test functionality would be available here as well, where you would measure uh, wire amperage, battery transformer voltage, and initiate your valve locator feature. <laughs>